Announcements, Miss Lakia Hayden. Let us give the Lord praise. Let us bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me.
Thank you, Lord. Stand yes. to your feet for our call to worship as it is printed in your worship guide. Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For again thy course is better than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of our wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is the holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, and sing his praises. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer this morning. Lord God, thank you. Thank you. We want to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. You have created the heavens and the earth. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your son, Jesus, who has given us his life the gift of salvation. Lord, with that gift of salvation, Lord, we know that all we have to do is trust, believe in you, have faith, and you will carry us through, Lord. Lord, we thank you for how you have carried us through this week. Lord, we thank you for how you have gotten us up, gotten us here in your house, Lord, to give you praise, to give you honor, and to fellowship with one another, Lord. Lord, we are thankful. Lord, we are thankful for this community of faith, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We, we thank you for each and every member. We thank you, Lord for all of our family and friends, Lord. And we just ask that you continue to watch over, guide us, lead us, be a fence all around us, Lord, so that we may have the victory in whatever snares, traps, things that may come our way. Lord, and we will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Georgetta Glover, Fred Trenchman Victor Glover, Reverend Stephen Ford, and the Greater St. John members, we would like to welcome our families, friends, and guests to our worship experience. We hope you will be inspired and uplifted by the words of a song, prayer, and a peach word. We thank you for your presence, and may God bless you all. Amen. Yes, all my help, 
all my help, all my help. It comes from the Lord. You know when I'm weak and I feel like I can't go on. And when I'm lonely, you come and comfort me. Sometimes I don't feel tired of the load that I'm bearing. You give me strength and courage, dear Lord, to carry on. Let me tell you, Father, I stretch every day mm -hmm, my hands to Thee. For there's no other help that will comfort me. I know that you, no matter what, no matter where, will remember me. Yes, you will. Because all of my help, my help, my help, it comes from you. I sing all of my hell. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Lord. How about you? All of my hell, my hell. It comes from the Lord. Everyone of my knees, yes, Lord, that I'm possessing. Thank you, Jesus. All my help, all my help, all my help, it comes from the Lord. If you know this, sing with me. All my help. My help, it comes from the Lord. Oh, my help, my help. Thank you, Lord. It comes from the Lord. Oh, my knees, every one of them. That I'm possessing All my help, all my help, all my help, all my help, all my help Every day, every hour All my help, all my help, all my help, all my help, all my help all my help, all my help, it comes from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. All my help, all my help comes from the Lord. Yes.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless you. Oh, my help. Oh, my help comes from the Lord. We thank God for the choir, for Dr. Darlene, for the first gentleman, Victor Glover, and we thank God for Sister Shirley Marshall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. If you desire, you may come to the altar. If not, you can stay right where you are because you know he meets you right where you are. If you come to the altar, we ask that you mask up and come. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. It's prayer time, church. Won't you come? Yes. Won't you come? to remember Jesus for he's the reason why we sing, he's the reason why we pray, he's the reason why we have life everlasting as they come today Lord we want to remember how he went to a quiet place to think to pray to talk to you Lord as we talk to you, Lord, help us to bring our minds and hearts as he brought his for you to see. We're not like him, no, Lord, with nothing to be ashamed of, but we want to be like Jesus as much as we can. So for his sake, Lord, we come humbly in prayer, asking special blessings for those, dear God, who have crossed our paths, special blessings for our families, special blessings for those who stand in harm's way so that we can be saved. We come, Lord, asking you to open the eyes and the ears of the nation, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of grace. We thank you, Lord, for your church, for the fellowship of the body of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your will. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that flows in and out of our, in our hearts, round about our lives and our physical beings, guiding us and leading us. We give you honor and glory and praise. We ask, Lord, that you, a special blessing upon our children 
School is already started, dear Heavenly Father, and the news is already filled with tragic deaths of our children. Children who are hurting, dear Heavenly Father, and the only thing they can think is to pick up a gun and go shoot their fellow students. We lift that child up, dear God, who took that gun to school, thinking that that was the only way out. We lift that child up, dear God. Let your word and your will cross his path. Let your way cross his path. Let someone who knows you cross their path, Lord, to let them know that there is another way. And that way is through and with your son, Jesus Christ. We lift up our teachers, dear God. Teaching is not what it was when I was a child, dear God. They have to know so much more, dear Heavenly Father. So much more. They have to be psychologists. They have to be psychiatrists. They have to be medical doctors, dear God. They have to be first responders, dear God. We lift up our teachers, Lord. Surround them, Holy Spirit. Protect them, guide them. Give them strength. Another day to love. Another day to teach. Another day to serve. We lay on the altar, dear God, those that are suffering from illness, both mental and physical. We beseech you, O oh Lord, according to your word, that by your stripes they are healed. We stand in the gap for them, dear God, as they receive restoration in our main home. We commend to your care all those who are in any way afflicted, or distress, dear God. We lift up, dear Heavenly Father, Barbara Egan, Carol Houston, Elsie Foster, Ernestine Lynch, Bernadette Ford, Bernadine Fox, Curtis and Ada Johnson, Edna Johnson, Mary Jones, James Hearn, Willie Wright Jr., Charles Reed and family, Gwendolyn Glenn, O.C. Kirk, Sabrina Vinegar, Marsha Green, the Marshall family, Gilda Owens, Patricia Upton, Michael Upton, Gloria Ursary and family, Dorothy Hall and family, Dorothy Starks, Malik Harbin, the Manning family, Laudel and Phyllis Jackson, and family. We lift up those that are on the journey of bereavement, dear God. The family of Mother Mary Jones on the passing of her daughter. Continue to lift up the family of Reverend Walter B. Johnson, Jr. and his wife, Dr. Sandra Womack Johnson. We continue to lift up the family of presiding elder, Tommy Hughes, dear God. I lift up my family, dear Heavenly Father on the passing of my cousin, Anthony Estelle. We ask you to encamp and encircle around us, dear Heavenly Father. Bring us comfort in this time, as only you can. We lift up, dear Heavenly Father, the leaders of our community. We lift up the sons and daughters in the ministry, dear God, all over. And we lift up our new bishop, dear God. Bishop Frederick Allen Wright. And his help me, Supervisor Jennifer Dixon Bright. As they embark, dear Heavenly Father, on this new journey to lead this district, God. Impart on them wisdom, compassion, love, and joy. Lord, again, we thank you. 
We thank you, Lord, for your kingdom abiding in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
our songs and prayers are heard and praised by men. Leave no meaning unless you've been born again. Sinner, heed these words. Don't let this harvest pass. Oh, only what you do for Christ will last. morning church it's been a while I think the last time I was out there long I had shingles and the Lord has done so much <laughs> and he's not through with me yet help me choir please
I shall come forth as true gold. Listen. If you should see me, sometimes I might not be walking right. And if you should hear me, I may not be talking right. But please be patient with me. For well, God is not through with me yet. When he gets through with me, I'll be just what he wants me to be. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Please patient with me God is not through with me yet when God gets through with me when God gets through with me I shall come forth I shall come forth as true gold That took the pressure off <laughs> to our pastor, my sister, my friend, Reverend Georgetta Glover, to the chair of our steward board, Dr. Darlene Reynolds, our first gentleman, Brother Victor Glover, my mother on the piano, Sister Shirley Marshall. And to all of you this morning, God bless you, and it's great to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Brother Joshua, prayerfully, I won't get any bigger, and we know I'm not going to get any taller, but I love that hoodie you have on today, brother. Oh, yeah. God's plan. Amen. Sometimes we don't know what God's plan is. Well, we just have to roll with the flow. And be patient and wait on him. My friend, Reverend Donnell Brown, who's visiting with us this morning. God bless you, brother. I haven't seen you since May when I walked out of the Ford plant. There's been a lot going on. And I'm going to share some of it with you this morning in the way of preaching and teaching. Now, if you have your Bible or your phone or wherever you look your scripture up at, Psalms 34, the 19th verse, reads as follows. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Church, we often wish we could escape troubles. The pain of grief, loss, sorrow, failure, or even the small daily frustrations that constantly wear us down. All of us have had some kind of affliction. Some of us have had multiple afflictions at one time. That surgery, that biopsy where you didn't know what the answer was going to be, them grown children that you still are covering in prayer, but then you realize that they have not departed from the way that you brought them up. That mental lapse. Males, and I'm not knocking females, but males have it worse because we were taught not to be emotional as we were growing up. 
big boys don't cry. Suck it up and keep on moving. But there comes a time in life Because of the way the world is now, we have to share with somebody. Their family told more. All of us have faced something through the years or are facing something now. Allow me for just a few minutes to testify and teach this morning. You see, it's been a while since I've been here. I think it was the third or fourth Sunday in June. And a lot has happened when the pastor stood here at the end of service on June 9th or 10th and told you all that I was in the emergency room. I had had a mild stroke. And they kept me overnight and sent me home. And I got a call the next day that told me the cardiologist had looked at my test and I have a hole in my heart. Now we're all born with one, but by the time we're two years old, it closes. Minds never close, and that's what caused the stroke. So they wanted me to wear a heart monitor to make sure that there were no other underlying factors, and then they were going to do this procedure to close this hole. But then I got a call from Social Security. Stating that I didn't have plan B, which means I couldn't get plan C and D that would cover all of this. So everything kept getting pushed back and pushed back. Now, I retired in May. But I'm going through this, and they put me on this heart medication. And now I find out I don't have any medical coverage unless I'm hospitalized. Then I find out with this heart medication that I can't take my arthritis medication. And the doctor didn't tell me this. I had to tell the doctor. So then the ankles started to swell and the knees started to hurt. Lord knows I tried to come to church. I even called Josh because it's easier for me to step up into his truck than for me to get down into a car. And that morning I got up, I got dressed and went to put my brace on my ankle and it wouldn't go on right. So I told him I can't go, keep on moving. But I was on Zoom most of the time listening to the service and I even preached once or twice from Zoom. But there was so much going on. And then aside from this, I got a call from my lawyer who was handling my accident case. Some of us have been through this, telling me that they had offered me a medical settlement, $3,300. I said, what about my car? Oh, we wasn't handling that part. Why not? That's what I hired you for. So, you know, in between all of this fighting, trying to get this plan B and getting this from the lawyer and her telling me, well, I'll put you in touch with their adjuster and they'll call you. The adjuster called me and said, we need you to bring your car in the air. It's just that enough. I'm not bringing it nowhere. Come get it. She hit me. Come get it. So it took them two weeks. They finally came and got it. And we went through some rigmarole and this, that, and the And at the same time, I'm calling Social Security. I'm trying to get this plan B. I can't get coverage. I can't get this. I can't get that. So I'm pushing these tests back because if they do these tests and I don't have coverage, I got a bill. And to this day, I still have not had a heart monitor. I still haven't had the procedure I'm supposed to have. The cardiologist finally told me, well, you can take your arthritis medicine every other day, or you can take it two or three times a week. And you know, sometimes that don't work when you're on meds. They have to get in your system and they have to work. 
So then I worked out a plan that I would take this, these meds on Friday and Sunday. And that's part of the reason I'm standing here today. But then I got a call and a letter from Social Security stating, your plan B will be active September 1st. So then I got my medical coverage and this, that, and the other. Talk with a friend. And with all of this going on, he told me just to hang in there. And, and I was hanging. Now, there were times with, after this stroke and with this heart medication and me not being able to take the arthritis medication, I would sleep downstairs. God knew what he was doing when we bought this house. Because it's a tri-level. It's six stairs down, six stairs up from the main level. But because my spouse works from home and the office is outside the bedroom, it's the next room, I would sleep downstairs. Number one, I didn't want to get woke up at 6.30 in the morning while she's trying to get ready. Number two, I felt more comfortable being in the man cave. But I still got woke up every morning. You all right down there? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. But there were times when I did get up that I would walk up those stairs. And there's a hallway here and the kitchen is here. And I was able to make it to the kitchen and sit down. And I was out of breath. I would wait, catch my breath, let the dogs out, get their food ready, let them back in and go sit down again. And when I talked to the doctor, my new cardiologist told me, if you're tired, sit down. If you're sleepy, take a nap. And that's what I did for a while. But then as I began to adjust and get things together, things worked. But things started to work better. But I'm still going through this fight with Medicare and trying to see a doctor and this, that, and the other. Walking up those six stairs, letting the dogs out. Then after I let them out, I would try to fix a little breakfast. Then I would sit in the kitchen in the breakfast nook for two or three hours, reading or watching TV. And my concentration will be broke because my wife saw fit to take an extra break or two <laughs> and come downstairs. Knowing that I couldn't take this arthritis medication took through me for a loop. And when I did get a chance to go see my new cardiologist, he thought I was still on my old blood clot medication. I said, no, she changed it to this. And he said, oh, but the look on his face was like, why? So now I'm getting a new primary care. I met with them at Oak Street Health last week. And they'll probably get me a cardiologist because for some reason I don't trust an advocate at all now. My primary care there should have sent me for the test I'm about to have back in 2012 when I suffered my first stroke. That's why I always tell y'all, fire that doctor if they ain't working out for you. You can get another one. You paying them. They're not paying you. Everything was going well, and I came up on this scripture. I talked to a friend who said, man, you got a lot on your plate. I said, but even with everything on my plate, guess what? My cup runneth over. Amen. My cup runneth over because goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
Now, this sermon is about me, but it's about you, too, because we've all been through some of this stuff, and it's weighed us down. You get to a point where you think you're in a barren place. Everything around you is drying up. You don't have answers. And you know you're still walking with God, but you don't listen or you're waiting for an answer. And if you turn to this scripture or read this scripture on your phone this morning, you'll know there's a second part to verse 19 where it starts out many are the afflictions of the righteous that's the part I read but then it goes on to say but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them yes yes many are your afflictions you got family issues, you got job issues, you got lack of job issues, you got financial issues, you got physical issues, you got mental issues I'm going to tell y'all something right now. I'm walking better than I have in two and a half weeks. I saw the cord. Thank you. The Lord our God is a good God. And if I was going to put a title on this text, guess what it would be? He's been good to me. Yes, yes. Through my ups and downs and my turnarounds. Mm -hmm. Through family issues, through uh, physical issues, through financial issues, he's been good to me. The Lord, but the Lord delivers. The choir, you know, I didn't talk to Miss Marshall, I didn't talk to Dr. Darlene, I, didn't, I talked to Pastor last night. I didn't know what they were singing today. But when you think about this scripture, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. You think of the songs that the choir sang today. What was the first song you all sang this morning before victory is mine? Bless the, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes. Then they went on to say, victory is mine. Yes. I told Satan, ha, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Peace is mine. Joy is mine. Healing is mine. Get thee behind me. Then they sang, all my help. You know, we spend so much time calling mama, daddy, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, big mama, not being funny, the pastor, the assistant pastor, and we ain't asked the Lord nothing. <laughs> all my help comes from the Lord. Church, I don't know if you have a testimony this morning, but I do. He's been good to me. I ain't had a test yet. Went to the pharmacy the other day to get some refills that were running out. I got two of them and it was good to walk up to the counter and get these medications and the girl look at me and say, no charge. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Then they told me that the heart medication and another one was ready and I went to go get it. And the heart medication the girl told me three twenty-five, not three dollars and twenty-five cent, three hundred twenty-five dollars. So I told her, I said, you know what? I got a few days left with that. I need to call the doctor and I need to speak to the head pharmacist because I don't need a ninety-day supply. How you know? I said I need a thirty-day supply just until I see the doctor and have this test. Then he gonna give me something else. See, and I know he's going to work that out. Yeah. That's why people struggle. And you can't even use a coupon on this medication. Mm. I'm like, why is the government letting this happen? No charge, no charge. Ooh, 300. 
but he's still been good to me. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's been good to you. When I look at you and I think about some of the stories you shared, surgeries and car accidents and families, and, 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 and even in sorrow when you lost someone, it threw me for a big loop. When my brother Walter passed away, he and I used to run around Ogden Park. He was Rich Gallon and I was Ernie Banks. And, 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 and I thought about it. I'm two and a half weeks older than he was. Sometimes we have to think about our mortality mm -hmm. and the things that we've done and not done and accomplish the things that he's given us to do. He's been good to me. Like I told you, I told my friend when he said my plate was full, I know that my cup runneth over. Yeah. We had the grandbabies for a little while yesterday, and this is a little bit off the subject, but it's not. They're growing, they're getting big. And one of the first words they said, said aside from dad, dad, and mommy, was paw paw. All right. <laughs> Glenn got a little jealous, but then because she FaceTimes them, they started saying Ninny, which is what they call her. And very seldom would they say Paw Paw. Well, yesterday I heard Paw Paw so much, I wanted to change my name. <laughs> and I would answer them, and they would still just say Paw Paw. Yes, sir. Paw Paw. What you need? I said, he for real? And he started talking some more. And then she got started. But it's a joy. It's a joy to see that. I was able to go Friday to see the oldest one play football. He's playing cornerback for Morgan Park. And there was a time I would not have been able to go to the game. But I was able to go. When we do what God recommends for us to do, when we follow his path, even if we have to go through the valley, it didn't say you had to stop. It said you was going through the valley of the shadow of death. Keep going because I fear no evil. For he has not given us a spirit of fear. I don't know about you, but the scripture says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Church, the prayers of the righteous avail of much. Keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on pressing for the mark. And he will deliver if you stay on the straight and narrow. So many of us mess up because God tells us to go left and we go right. Mm -hmm. Then we wonder where we went wrong. Mm -hmm. But God's been good to me. Mm -hmm. God's been good to you. Yeah. He's been good to you and you and you and you and you. And the question this morning, I'm going to end with this. And Sister Marshall moves to the piano. Have you taken the time to count your blessings? He's been good to me. Have you taken the time to say thank you, Lord? Even though you're not where you think you ought to be, but you're not where you used to be. Have you taken the time just to say thank you, Lord, because you woke me up this morning and you started me on my way. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is a present. The doors of the church are now open. If there is one who does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, 
If you're in the Zoom sanctuary, I bid you to raise your hand. Contact the church, 773-925-2262. Have you taken the time to count your blessings? Is there one this morning? Is there one in the Zoom sanctuary? Listen, have you taken He's been good. He's been good. Mm -hmm. Have you taken the time to count your blessings? He has been good. Yes, he's been good. Have you looked uh, around to see how good God's been to you? He's been good. And I love him. He's been good. <laughs> Have you ever had a problem you thought would just knock you down? He's been good. Yeah, he's been good. And before you could turn around, I he reached down and he picked you up. He's been good. And I love him. He's been good. We have one. He, he's been so good. Well, I love him. I love him. He has set me free. He's been good, and I love him. He's been good. He's my life, my joy, my all. There's nothing in between. He's been good. Yes, God's been good. I'll go with him till the end. Uh, he's been my best friend. He's been good. And I love him. He's been good. He's been good. Come on, church. He's been good to me. God's been so good to me. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him. He has set me free. He's been good. And I love him. He's been good. He's been good, and I love him. He's been good. He's been good, and I love him. He's been Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It is worship through giving. Yes. Yes. 
Directed by the ushers, you may bring your tithes and offerings to the tithe box located in the rear of the church. You may also mail checks only to the church, address 6201 South Troop, Chicago, 60636. You may contact your class leader, Dr. Darlene, or myself, Walter Reynolds, to pick up your tithes, or you may drop them off on Thursday during the food pantry hours, 9 a.m. to 11 p. I'm sorry, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. <laughs> We're there for all the time. We just we're spending the night. Okay. You may also give through Givelify. That address is www.givelify.com forward slash givers forward slash. Look for Greater St. John Amy Church, Chicago. You also may send your gifts through Zale. And that address is Greater St. John ame at att.net. All this good information is located in the rear of your worship guide. You can find that there. The oratory prayer. I'm yeah. The oratory prayer. Lord, as we ask for your blessing upon these gifts and givers, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Or oratory response. All things. Oh. Good morning, Pastor Glover. Good morning, Mr. Nana. <laughs> Good morning, First Gentleman Victor Glover. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Ford. Good morning. And good morning, Greater St. John Church family. Good morning. These are your announcements for Sunday, September 8th. Community health updates. COVID-19 is on the rise. Wear masks when you are in close proximity of others. Wash your hands often or use hand sanitizer. Make sure to check with your doctor to make sure your vaccines are up to date. Please make sure to keep up with the recommendations of the CDC and your doctor so you can keep yourself and others safe. For current updates, visit the City of Chicago Health Alerts, www.chicago.gov. Our hybrid Sunday worship services <coughs> begins at 10.30 a.m at 6201 South Troop Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636, and on Zoom, the meeting ID 814-2933-2060, passcode GSJ2020. To call in, dial 1312-626-6799, meeting ID 814-2933-2060 pound. Passcode 426-8537-POUND. We are on YouTube. Please subscribe to Greater St. John's YouTube channel. Once we reach 50 subscribers, we will be able to live stream our worship service. You can view each Sunday's worship experience on YouTube. Please see Brother Joshua Mann. He will assist you in subscribing to our YouTube channel. We need a few more people to meet our goal. Thank you the media ministry. Our evening Bible study and prayer will meet Tuesday, September 10th, 2024 at a new time, 7 p.m. for this week only. The topic will be the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. All are invited to attend. Please join us Saturday, September 14th, 2024 at 10 a.m. for Sabbath School on the Conference Bridge number 1774-220-4000, ID 12440-POUND. The topic is Hezekiah's Prayer, Scripture Reference, 2 Kings, the 19th chapter, 14th through the 20th verse, 
and 29th through the 31st verse. Sister Rosalie the Pasolin, teacher. Dates to remember. All meetings will be held on Zoom. September 9th, Greater St. John Lay Meeting, 7 p.m. September 12th, Class Leaders Meeting, 6.30 p.m. September 25th, Stewardship and Finance Meeting, 4 p.m. Steward Board Meeting, 6 p.m. and Trustee Board Meeting, 7 p.m. September 2024 Birthdays. September 1st, Brother Willie Wright Jr. September 2nd, Sister Mary Jo Hayden. And September 22nd, Sister Phyllis Jackson. Happy birthday, and that concludes your announcement. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Let us stand for our closing song and our benediction. God be with you till we meet again. His mercy endureth forever. Yes, sir. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide of all you. With this sheep can truly fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet. At Jesus' feet. good to me. Yes. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, may the grace, peace, and mercy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. Amen.